12 at 10. It is truly always 100% been a, a fear of mine when a, if a derailment happens, what are they carrying and, it, and what is damaged and how quick can you find out what it is. First responders and Homeland Security officials spend their careers considering the what ifs. What if we had a train derailment leading to a massive explosion in one of our Arklatex towns? You're looking at video from Quebec, Canada and Lynchburg, Virginia, where that very thing has happened over the last few years. Well, you can uh, so far here at home, we've been very fortunate, but we've learned the fuel for such a massive fire rose through our backyards every single day on what some are calling Danger Express. Pick just about any city in any state and you'll find this, trains heading down the tracks. Here in Bossier City, a simple trip to work likely requires passing over tracks or waiting forever because there are train tracks all over Bossier City. So far, we've been spared from this. This utter destruction with 47 dead was in a village in Quebec, Canada. The town was leveled. A train carrying tankers full of crude oil derailed and exploded in July of 2013. Since that time, tanker cars burst into massive flames in Aliceville, Alabama. And 400,000 gallons of crude derailed, causing an explosion and fire near Castleton, North Dakota. And this is in downtown Lynchburg, Virginia. 17 tankers derailed, three empty crude oil into a major Virginia river. And this fire is from just one tanker car that exploded. So are we prepared here on both sides of the Red River? We have a potential here for mass casualties with a giant fire event. Fred Millar is an independent consultant on rail safety who's worked with several cities in railroad unions. This huge load of very dangerous uh, unit trains was put out on the rail lines with no advance notice, no advance preparation. These cars here, from what it looks like, are going to be uh, maybe dry chemical. In a perfect world, first responders would know in advance what's coming down the tracks. This is a feeder track, and it does have a, a wide range of chemicals that are on it. But that's just not the way it works. As Benton Fire Chief J.T. Wallace explains, Firefighters have to inch closer to a derailment and the danger just to know what they're dealing with. It is truly always 100% been a, a fear of mine when a, if a derailment happens, what are they carrying and, it, and what is damaged and how quick can you find out what it is. Crude oil is highly flammable and shipments by trains have increased by 4,000% since 2008. The trains, sometimes more than 100 cars long, are carrying the volatile loads from newly productive oil patches in North Dakota. Some of that passes right through Shreveport, Bossier, East Texas, Arkansas, all throughout the Arklatex every day. On one given day, I found crew just sitting on tracks behind a business on Benton Road in North Bossier, passing down the tracks in South Bossier at Barksdale and Airline Drive. Now 99.95% .95 of these shipments reach their destinations safely. But several devastating accidents in the last two years, like this fireball in the sky in West Virginia, has the rail companies under a microscope. It would benefit us to know so we could let our first responders know that this is coming through the community. And first responders right here in our area have their own concerns. You're the Homeland Security Director. Why wouldn't they entrust you with that information so you know exactly when and how much and, on, and, and at what time it's coming through? Yeah, you have to ask them. Our KSLA News 12 Raycom Media investigation asked states to turn over records, documents, and maps shared with emergency responders by the rail companies. It revealed just how much crude is coming down the tracks through our communities. After months of denials, states like Louisiana finally turned over the documents. Over the last year, the U.S. Department of Transportation began requiring that rail companies disclose any time one of their trains had at least a million gallons of crude on board. Now, we chat with companies that run the local rails, BNSF, CSX, and Kansas City Southern. They say in 2014, they never hit that threshold. However, paperwork shows that Union Pacific, at least three different times, rerouted trains through the Caddo Bossier area with at least a million gallons of crude on board. And Union Pacific's major line goes through Arkansas eight to 12 times a week. 
But now, just last week, the government decided that all of this information we obtained will be secret again, exempt from disclosure. All major freight rail companies are in the business of moving this oil. Our number one concern is delivering every shipment of freight that we move safely to its intended destination, whether it's crude oil or anything else. And less than two weeks ago, federal regulators announced new guidelines for these rail companies. They all must add new brakes, and the oil must be shipped in newer, stronger tanker cars. And trains traveling through high-risk urban areas like downtown Shreveport or Bossier City, perhaps, must now drop their speed to 40 miles an hour. A safer speed, but a longer wait for you and me. There's never enough respect for, for, for the train. And, and if people don't respect the trains, at least ex respect what they carry on the train, because it can make a difference between life and death. The fire chief and the Bossier Homeland Security Director both say the rail companies have been as cooperative as possible with training. We'll get into that in part two tomorrow and with the exchange of some information. And tomorrow on KSLA News 12 at 5, we'll take a closer look at the tracks here at home, neighborhoods in need of escape plans, and some of that training and exactly what is rolling the tracks of the Arklatex. Developing